everyone a very good morning and as promised i am here today to take forward your cans classes from topic number 1 before we start a quick introduction of mine i am kavaljit korsoni i'll be your coach for this particular course of cans since the course is a very widely recognized a lot of people go for it it is important for us to understand the basics in detail these basics really help us cracking the examination in first time also it helps us understanding the concept for our practical purpose so what i have planned is i have broken down the concept of camps examination into small small topics rather than going chapter wise or concept wise we'll break it into small small concept and take it forward this way of learning works really well because you understand each concept quite in detail and that really help us cracking the exam understanding the question really well and understanding the concept for practical purpose as well so objective of these video lectures is to enhance your knowledge upgrade your skill set and prepare you for the exam of camps since this exam is all about testing your knowledge in terms of what is money laundering how various organizations how different countries try and combat money laundering so we need to understand the basic concept of money laundering really really well today i will be doing conceptual discussion of money laundering we will try and understand two things quite in detail one is money laundering second e what is terror funding what is the linkage between money laundering and terror funding so this is the objective of this particular video as and when we proceed further we will be coming up with a new and new concept and we will discuss each concept quite in detail so let's begin and understand the objective what is money laundering how it hurts organization how does it hurt countries per se there is a term which we learn a lot which we hear a lot is called financial crime so let's understand what is financial crime any crime which is committed against the assets which involves any proceeds which we have gained from unlawful activity or illegal activity would be covered under financial crime so if we talk about definition it says the financial crime is a crime which is committed against property which involves the unlawful conversion of the ownership of a property to one's own personal use and benefit so for example i have certain proceeds which i have gained from illegal source i am trying to convert that asset into something else this might be covered under financial crime there are many type of financial crime one of them is money laundering apart from that we have other financial crime include terror funding frauds tax evasions and so on so let's understand the first point which is money laundering much in detail as to what exactly is money laundering how does it really hurt so let's understand the basics of money laundering what is money laundering when our clothes get dirty we launder it we try and clean it so that our dirty clothes converts into cleaner clothes now exactly same thing happens to money so when we try to do laundry of dirty money we try to convert dirty money into cleaner money it's called money laundering here a question comes to our mind is what makes a money dirty how can money be dirty so let's understand how the money becomes dirty each time you have procured that money from any illegal source 
that is called dirty money so the source of money should be unlawful activity illegal activity that is what is called dirty money if somebody has done illegal activity got lot of cash he has kept that cash in his house do we call that money laundering no we don't call that money laundering at this stage the money at this stage is called undisclosed income because somebody has procured that money kept it in the house it's never disclosing to tax authority that is is undisclosed income tax evasion will come into picture unlawful gains come into picture but at this stage we will not call it money laundering why do we not call it money laundering at this stage because at this stage the money is still there in a cash form i have not tried and converted that into any other mode at what stage money laundering actually starts the money laundering starts when you try to convert your illegal gains into cleaner form that stage is called money laundering in examination there may be lot of scenario based question which will test your knowledge on this part every time we get some money from illegal source it may not be called money laundering there may be other names for it the money laundering means when you try to convert the dirty money into cleaner money if you are not trying to cover it up if you are not trying to layer it it is not called money laundering this picture might help us understanding a bit more so the gentleman on the left side has done some crime got lot of cash so he got a financial or physical return from the original crime do we call it money laundering till here not really now if you look at stage number 3 here my money laundering starts why because at this stage we are trying to camouflage and conceal layering this is what we generally call it money laundering from here the money laundering actually starts why do we need to understand this in detail if we are trying to enhance our skill set in anti money laundering every single point matters a lot also money laundering is a very serious criminal offense if you are into practice if you are into profession handling the money laundering cases or you are aml professional you need to understand very minute detail about ml money laundering that's why it's very important that we understand what stage is where we actually call it money laundering so i hope by now we have understood the definition of money laundering a very quick revision before we proceed further money laundering is a process where we do laundry of dirty money we try to convert dirty money into cleaner money or each time we are trying to hide the source of illegal money try to cover it up try to uh, layer it we call it money laundering this is what is the definition of money laundering there are certain elements which are involved now let's discuss those elements of money laundering the first proceeds of earned lawful activity it's very very important that if you are talking about money laundering the source of money should be illegal unlawful practically there is a challenge an activity which may be legal in one country may not be legal in other jurisdictions sometime or in fact most of the time when the transaction becomes cross border this could be one of the challenge that is where mutual assistance comes into picture where both countries 
come together and agree that if it is illegal for you, we will consider as a money laundering or illegal as well. So we will talk about that part maybe in next sessions. At this stage, what we have to understand that first element of money laundering that the money should be the origin of the money should be from unlawful activity at least the activity should be unlawful in the country from where it originates that is first element element number two knowledge of unlawful origin let's say mr a is a genuine businessman he is involved in a import export business mr a is an exporter who is supposed to receive money from importer based out of uk and let's say exporter is based out of india mr a does not know what importer does importer based out of uk has some linkage with illegal activities so the importer who is based out of uk has procured some money from unlawful activity then he used that proceeds of unlawful activity to pay off the money to mr a for import in this story will mr a be called a money launderer will he be considered a co-conspirator of the crime now that depends it depends on another crucial element is mr a aware what mr a does was mr a aware what was the source of money which mr the importer has used to transfer it to mr a if the answer is yes then the answer is yes for this question as well that mr a is a co conspirator he is a very much involved in money laundering who has a responsibility to prove mr a mr a has to prove that he was not aware about the activity of importer if he want to comes cleaner if mr a says that hey i never knew how my importer gets money then he has to prove it that is the second thing knowledge of unlawful origin if importer uh, sorry exporter was aware that importer is involved in money laundering still he accepted that money it's absolute a money laundering so this was second element the third element intent to launder there are two words which we need to learn from a legal side plaintiff and defendant so if mr a has filed a case against mr b mr b is a defendant and mr a is a plaintiff so defendant is a person against whom the case is being filed okay so intent to launder if we are trying to prove that somebody is involved in money laundering we have to prove that the defendant had the intent to conceal so not only a person had the money which is procured from illegal source he also had a intent to layer it so that he is not getting caught this is another very crucial element of money laundering intent to launder so guys remember one thing very clearly each and every fraud is based on one single element called intent a difference between fraud and error lies in a single line malicious intent and so is money laundering which is not different than any other fraud so in money laundering also we really need to prove in the court that person had an intent to cover it up these are three important element i hope we are clear on this let's proceed and discuss few more element the next element conduct of financial transaction mr a has got some money from drug trafficking he kept all the cash in his house 
Is it a money laundering? No, it's not. Why? Because he has not tried to convert that into any other source as yet. That means the next element is there should be conduct of financial transaction. A person should try to deposit, withdraw, do some transaction via financial channel. This is one more element. And then comes concealment or disguise. Do you know why people do money laundering? Many of us would be thinking that people do money laundering for, for gain. No, that's not the answer. Trust me, money laundering is not something where people do it for gain. They do money laundering to conceal, to disguise, to cover, to layer. So that's the objective that the idea is to conceal the origin so that the regulators, the law enforcement will not get to know that what was the origin of the money. How did you get that money? So that is where we have to prove in court if we are into uh, AML profession that the money was tried to be concealed or disguised. So these are five very crucial elements of money laundering. These five elements will not only help us understanding money laundering concept a bit better for practical purpose, it will also support us in solving the question in examination. In the examination, there may be a lot of questions. Some of them could be scenario based question, case study based, which actually give you some answers which are very, very close. These five elements will help you hitting the nail and understand which one out of those four or five options is the best. Correct? A, a quick uh, what I say is a tip from my end at this stage. In examination, when you try and solve the question, please read all four or five or whatever options are given. Even if you know the answer. Most of the time, none of the option is actually wrong. We have to select the best answer. And in order to select the best answer, we have to read all options, isn't it? So this was about the concept of money laundering and elements of money laundering. I'm very sure uh, people who are watching me right here are very clear on this at this stage. Since if you are clear, let's take forward and discuss the stages of money laundering. Another very, very frequently tested concept in examination. How many stages of money laundering do we have? What are those stages? And I wish the exam question could be as simple as that. There are three stages. But you know, the only fun of examination that the examination tests very in-depth knowledge. So the kind of question which comes in examination regarding stages of money laundering be absolutely case study based. We need to understand the stages pretty well. We should also know the sequence of those stages. So let's talk about those stages and take it forward. As you can see, there are three stages, placement, layering, and integration. So we not only need to remember these three stages, we should know their sequences as well. The first number, placement, second layer, third integration. Let me explain it first. The moment I'm trying to introduce my dirty money into economy, the cleaner economy. This is stage number one, placement. I'm introducing my dirty money. But if I just put my money into economy and leave it alone, I'll be caught in a minute. Right. The countries are uh, you know, very strict about money laundering. There are a lot of regulations all around the world. I cannot leave it like that. I have to cover it up. I have to conceal it. That's my second stage, layering. Layering 
is a stage where you try to hide it. If this is my illegal sword, I have to cover it so that nobody will be able to get to know how did I get it. Then the third stage goes a bit above the layering, integration. Practically integration is one of the, though it's the last stage of money laundering and one of the toughest stage from where you can find money laundering. At integration, the money converts into cleaner money. The dirty money converts into cleaner money and very difficult to find which one is dirty, which one is cleaner. It becomes part of a normal economy or white economy and the money gets merged. The only way to find the money laundering at this stage is to connect the dots backward. We have to go through the transaction logs, go back till placement to understand whether this money was actually a dirty money. So these are three stages of money laundering, placement, layering and integration. Now if you look at this picture, in placement, somebody is trying to introduce the money to banking. It could be any financial institution, it could be insurance sector, securities market, it could be banking. Banking is a preferred choice for money laundering though. But apart from that, there could be many other choices. So at this stage, money is introduced, we call it placement. Then we try and cover it up. Now if you see this stage, circle. There are different ways the money converts lot of uh, you know colors. For example, the dollar $1 million was deposited in bank. This $1 million was procured from drug trafficking. This is stage number one, placed. But if $1 million will be placed in the bank, the regulator will be able to find that transaction really fast. One, the monetary amount is higher. Second, uh, it becomes considered a suspicious transaction will be reported in the central bank of that country. So the first thing we have to do is we have to break the transaction into small, small pieces. Technically, we call it smurfing. Smurfing is a technique to break the large transaction into small, small parts. With smurfing, $1 million will be converted into small, small portion spread over various accounts. These accounts, so most of the time in these cases, there could be involvement of employees of bank who may support in the money laundering process. So if I'm finding, let's say 50 odd account or 100 odd account in a bank, as a third party, it's very difficult. Trust me, I'm ex-banker. It's not that easy. So if I have somebody who's helping me out from insider, Inside the bank, of course, I can do that. So the objective is to break the large transaction into small pieces for two reasons. One, it will not be reported in the suspicious transaction because the amount may be too small to report. Second, it might not look like a very suspicious transaction. And since it is getting spread over multiple account, there is a high probability that you'll get away with it. So smurfing is a very widely used technique in money laundering. So in placement, we introduce the money in bank, break into two small, small pieces. Now let's say if I'm sending money from any riskier jurisdiction, let's say to a safer zone, for example, any XYZ country which is known to support the, the drug trafficking or corruption or terrorism, if that money comes directly from those country to a safer jurisdiction like UK, Canada, US, it will be difficult. So first this money will be routed to a safer jurisdiction. So let's say there is a country A which is considered riskier country. Country A may have small neighborhood country which is not considered risky. But since it's a small country, they trust their neighbors too much and their 
AML process are not that stringent. So from a risky country, the money will first come to that safer jurisdiction, which is a small jurisdiction. In that jurisdiction, the dollar may convert into various things. For example, travel checks, gold, diamond, multiple ways. It will not be going exactly in the same form ahead. Now this money from this country will go to country B, C, all these are safer zone by the way. And from C, it will ultimately go to let's say USA. By the time money reaches to US, it is not convert coming directly from A country, which is a riskier jurisdiction. So probably US will welcome this transaction, not knowing that the money actually is coming from that riskier country. From USA, the money will come to let's say India. India also have a very strong AML process. But since money is coming from another safer jurisdiction, say US, this will be welcome. Now in India, all the money will be clubbed. Let's say some in bank account and then it will convert back into cash. So let's say if you have gold, diamond, etc. Come to India, sell it off in the local market, convert into cash and never pay taxes on it. So this is money laundering. Started from one origin, uh, jurisdiction, lend it up somewhere else, but in a very layered form. This is how the money laundering actually happens. So these are the stages. If you look at it, the stage number one is a placement stage where we introduce the dirty money from illegal activity into financial system. So we can convert that into valuable asset. We can use any kind of front business to do that. The example which I just gave is just one of the technique of money laundering guys. If you know me, I am not just into training, but into hardcore consulting when it comes to uh, fraud related, fraud detection, as well as AML consulting. So with my practical experience, I can tell you that there are so many methods in the market for money laundering today that sometimes it's really tricky for us to understand. And most of the transaction which we see for money laundering today are pretty complicated. It's not easy to understand. And that is the one of the very important reason that many times these money launderer gets away with it. Coming back to stages, the stage number one was placement. Stage number two is layering. At this stage, we have to distance ourselves from illicit fund source. The entire objective of money laundering is to distance and say, hey, it's not illegal. It's very much legal. That's what we are trying to do in layering. The better is the layering, difficult for the regulators to find it out. It's as simple as that. So in layering, we transfer the fund from one account to another, convert into various form, use shell company, front companies, convert the money, and route it to different jurisdictions. Objective is to create confusion and complicate. That is the core objective of money laundering. And integration, the last stage of money laundering. At this stage, we reintroduce the clean fund into economy as if we never procured it from illegal source. Once integrated, the funds are challenging to distinguish from legitimate earned money. Can you ever see two currency notes and say, hey, this is dirty, this is cleaner? No, you just cannot. That is why in the beginning itself, I said integration is one of the most difficult stage from where we can find out what was the source of money laundering. So whatever we have discussed so far, is basically what is money laundering. Money laundering, a very complicated concept. From examination perspective, please stick to the basic. If you are very clear on three things, 
I'm very sure you can never go wrong on that. One, the definition part, second, the elements part, and third, the stages part. When you prepare for examination, try not to mug up. If you just try to remember the things, you may not be able to remember so many things. Let's be practical. You know, our mind has a, a limited capacity, especially when most of you guys are working. We have many more things to look at. So do a smart study, focus on crucial things. These and, and stick to it, no matter how twisted the examination question is. No matter how many times they're trying to convert, uh, confuse you. Stick to what you know. So this is about the basic concept of money laundering. Now, once we have understood the concept of money laundering, it's time for us to go ahead and understand what is CFT. Combating or financing of terrorism. In the beginning, we said that money laundering is a financial crime. Yes, indeed, it is. But when we think about financial crime, we always think about money. We think that what cost would be for this crime is just involving the money. But trust me, when it comes to money laundering, it's not just about no. It is about lives. It is about national security. Each time we get to know about any terror attack in any part of the world, we should link it with money laundering. That serious is money laundering. So it's very important that we not only combat money laundering, we combat the financing of terrorism as well. Have you ever wondered how terrorists get paid? They need a lot of money for their operations. No. How do they get it? The root is very deep and money laundering is closely associated with terror funding. That is why we need to not only understand about ML, we have to really understand about CFT as well. What is terror funding? Terror funding is a a way through which terrorists get paid and the money laundering where the origin of money is illegal we try to cover it up it could be definitely supporting the terror attacks even though money laundering and terrorism is closely associated we cannot call them one of the same there are certain differences between two so let me explain what is the difference between the terror funding or and the money laundering the first difference lies in the purpose the objective of money laundering is not to gain what is the objective the objective of money laundering is to cover layer if you really talk about money laundering frankly it involves a lot of cost the money launderer if they use Havala or any uh, you know, parallel system, they end up paying a lot. So for them, it's not a gain related uh, you know, uh, activity. But they have to convert that. That's why they are doing it. But the objective of terror funding is always a gain. You must be wondering as to who gets advantage of this terror attack. You tell me. Isn't it some country, some politicians are always getting benefited? I hope we all are updated on world history. We are still looking at it in our surroundings. Terror funding is always backed by some political groups, some countries. They get the gain. Unfortunate, but true. The second, source of fund. The one of the very crucial element of money laundering that the origin of money in money laundering should be what? Illegal, unlawful. However, that's not important or necessary for terror funding. For example, Mr. A has a genuine line of business 
and he has lot of money available for some reason he follows some radical thinking he wants to support certain terror group because he supports that ideology so in this case if mr a is donating that money to the terror group the source of money is not illegitimate because mr a is involved in a genuine line of business he earns the money from a genuine business the difference is that he is using or misusing that money for supporting the terrorism so that is the second difference source of fund it's not necessary that in terror of funding the source fund is illegitimate most of the time terror groups have a front of trust ngo and so on and most of the time they receive donations charities that's how they channelize the money into wrong ways the third difference is amount of money money in laundering generally involves lot of money when i say lot of money the chunk of money is generally larger however in terror funding the amount will be small small chunks let's say if a charity will start getting uh you know donations of 1 billion dollar etc they will really get highlighted very soon so the kind of donation they receive is a small small part from a various type of donors so that it looks very legitimate tracking the process the money laundering is a circular transaction it originates from one place and come back to the same class however the terror funding is a linear process once the money has gone from one source it will never come back the money will be misused for whatever terror attack needs to be done so the circular uh, the money laundering is a circular transaction terror funding is a linear transaction the next difference penalties both are very serious crime however the penalties for terror fundings are much higher than the uh, what to say money laundering so money laundering penalties are comparatively lesser than the terror funding and the next is priority if you have to really prioritize what kind of crime should be investigated first what do you think should be a priority terror funding not that the money laundering is less serious crime but if you have to still prioritize terror funding would be first priority and then then money laundering so these are certain differences between ml and tf from here the word generated cft combating of financing of terrorism now next time when you hear the word ml slash cft i hope you will be very clear what is ml and what is cft now at this stage we have learned the concept of money laundering as well as terror funding it's time for us to go ahead and discuss what is the consequences of money laundering i'm sure most of us by now have understood that it's a pretty serious crime so let's see more on the seriousness of the crime more crime and corruption you know i read somewhere that we always attract people who are like us if i'm honest i'll attract similar type of person and other way around so is a corporate if the top layer of a company is ethical they will always attract ethical people from outside and other way around the crime is no exception if a country has a reputation of supporting the terrorism or money laundering it will become a hub it will attract criminal from all over the world to go to that place and do the transaction today there are certain very well developed countries who are getting into bad name because of this and that is true 
So not only it is a one-time activity of money laundering, it attracts more crime and corruption in that country. The second, harm to legitimate business. Most of the time, money launderers use front businesses, shell entities. They use those shell entities just to launder the money. But that does impact the reputation of other private businesses because it's very difficult to know which business is legi legitimate and which one is not. So it impacts the reputation of legitimate businesses as well. Weak financial system. The money laundering weakens the entire economy, the banking, insurance, security market, because the money launderer misuse it and that impacts their reputation, their operations and weaken them. It discourages foreign investment. Nobody wants to get into that country which is problematic. Why would you invest your money in a country which is at risks? risks of sanction, risk of terrorism, you wouldn't. So it discouraged the foreign investments. Less tax money for government. Government gets paid from taxation. It's a source of revenue for government. But since money laundering is closely associated with tax evasion, the government doesn't get paid because money is undisclosed. Since it's undisclosed, lot of revenue loss happened to the country. Reputation risk. Money laundering doesn't get restricted to a bank or a reputation of a bank. It impacts the entire country. There are a lot of examples where countries have got into negative light worldwide because there are some instances of money laundering so the entire country's reputation is at stake when one money laundering transaction occur and finally the risk of international sanctions money laundering is such a serious crime that across the globe the regulators are very strict on it you talk about united nations you talk about fatif you talk about uh, UK and US related sanctions, European sanctions. There is always a threat that the moment the country supports any transaction knowing or unknowingly, which helps in money laundering, there is a risk of sanctions. Today we know Russia is under a lot of sanctions. So that can happen to any country, no matter how big or small that country is. For example, in US, OFAC is a body which is a very strong, you know, acts related to sanctions. So there is always a risk of international sanction if a country supports money laundering in any manner. So these are some of the consequences of money laundering. If I talk about examination, in examination, they tend to ask the consequences a lot. So please focus real well on consequences as well. Then comes the social cost. Money laundering is not just restricted to banks and money and that's it. It impacts people like us, common man. So social costs are also involved. The first social cost is economic distortion. You must have you know heard about that that a person who has money from illegal sources or a person sometimes you know we jokingly say that hey you lot you have a lot of money you can do a lot of shopping you can spend a lot i'm a salaried person i cannot do it it very well holds true if a person has a lot of money from illegal source person will tend to spend it and mostly these spending will happen on luxurious items non-essential items that enhances inflation in the country. If you go back to your economics concept, you would have heard about that. The relationship between demand and price of product. Then I'm sure you would have also learned inflation. 
so economic distortion why money laundering does it because it enhances inflation in the country it impact the genuine businesses it enhances unfair competition all these are example of economic distortion the next is impact on financial institution few minutes back we had a discussion on it that banks reputation operations really get suffered also since banks have to make their aml processes stronger they end up spending a lot of money on aml process which could have been otherwise used for some legitimate purpose but thanks to this crime these days bank have to spend a lot on the security part cyber security part aml part it does involve a lot of cost so impact on financial institutions weakening of rule of law in a fraud concept there is a concept that people always have a tendency to challenge the law if a country has a strong law we think before do it in the country where the laws are not very strong people normally think let's try and see what happens so is money laundering when a money launderers you know bypass the legal channel it weakens the rule of law it gives us impression that laws just cannot prohibit such transactions such crime so it weakens the rule of law global security concerns as we just discussed money laundering is not just about money it is about terrorism so it impacts the global security tax evasion we had a discussion government doesn't get paid so it's a definitely a tax evasion and revenue loss social inequality some portion in the society will become richer and richer all the resources will centralized to some people that enhances social inequality and it undermines the financial inclusion with money laundering incidents banks really get scared they think many time before opening accounts there may be lot of cases where even genuine people are not able to get into financial institute because banks are scared that undermines the financial inclusion these are social costs involved with money laundering from examination perspective this is again considered to be an important topic the risk reputational risk the country is really suffer the reputation goes for a toss the banks the financial institution will suffer lot of penalties lot of uh, reputational loss operational risk since bank most of the time is busy with you know these aml process etc it impacts their operation as well as a wrong customer can halt lot of operation of the bank this becomes very problematic for banks to operate do a normal transaction so operational risks legal risk if a customer suffers any kind of financial crime probably they may file a case against bank bank has to take that legal risk or in case bank may end up supporting any money laundering transaction there will be lot of legal penalties on them so that's another legal risk and finally comes concentration risk though most of the country's central bank has a very clear norm that a bank cannot give loan to a single group of company or single borrower more than a certain percentage still sometimes you don't know two entities are group companies because they don't disclose bank may end up giving a big exposure of loan to a single borrower which may actually be a group of entity they never disclose that on group of entity that is concentration risk so these are certain risks which are associated with the money laundering so money laundering is not just about money money laundering is absolute a serious crime a crime 
which impact us in every aspect of life our security our day to day way of working our banking our country everything is at risk that is the impact of money laundering so with this our conceptual discussion of money laundering ends here now before we wind it up today's session i have just created these kind of short notes which includes not just the notes but practice question with every topic normally when we practice the question we don't get topic wise questions so let's say you want to test your knowledge on money laundering or just cft so i have created short notes for you with lot of case studies and a practice question of every topic if somebody is preparing for it wants any kind of study support you can always get in touch with us at this kind of detail and available on linkedin as kamaljeet kaur soni probably not many are there on linkedin with this name so you can always get in touch with me directly else you can get in touch with my team on these details and take it forward with this i thank you so much once again for having me and i will be with you very soon with a new topic with this i wish you all the very very best for your exam preparation i'll see you very soon thank you so much namaskar Thank you.